Whoo, baby, it is Iowa week. We're bringing home the bacon. We're jumping into the rivalry. What we heard from PJ Fleck in the press here today, along with breaking down the Iowa Hawkeyes. Hey, you no are locked happens, on Golden Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here, we're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota uh, Golden out, Gophers. Whatever turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. What's up, everyone? You are listening to Lockdown Golden Gophers, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Kane Robb, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant here to talk Golden Gophers with you each and every day of the week, Monday through Friday, and we are kicking off Iowa week. The bye week is gone. The bye week has passed. The bye week is done, and we are turning our eyes towards one of the bigger rivalries in college football, but one of the biggest games for the Gophers on this year's remaining schedule because struggling or not, comeback loss against Northwestern or not, blowout against Michigan or not, rivalry week is everything. If you can win your two huge rivalry games in the season, some fans will be willing to forgive mishaps that should not have happened. We're looking at you, Northwestern, but what we need to do is dive into today's matchup. What did we hear in today's presser? What is happening with this Iowa Hawkeyes team that you can doubt them, but they keep finding a way to get it done? We're jumping into all of that today, but the time is now. So be sure to follow over on YouTube at Lockdown Golden Gophers. Hit subscribe there or follow us wherever you get the podcast and leave a five-star review so others can find the show. But look, it's time to dive into Iowa week. So throw out the Vegas spreads on rivalry weeks, in my opinion, because these teams always just play a little bit different, whether they're in a good year, a bad year, a middling year. I don't care if the Gophers were 0 in six at this point right now, they would play an Iowa game tough in nine out of 10 matchups because that is what this rivalry is. So it's officially bacon week as Daryl Thompson, Gophers legend, likes to call it. And if you don't follow him on Twitter, you really should because this whole week he will be posting pictures of bacon week in preparation for this game and bringing home Floyd back to Minnesota. Now, what did we learn in today's pressers? Well, of course, we didn't get any updates on health because we know Coach PJ Fleck loves to keep that stuff locked tight down, held the secrets like it's a government secret. He just he doesn't do the injury information. So we uh, Andy Greeter even tried to get a little clever today with how he asked the injury question because we always get the same response. But he said. Coach, is it the intention to play Cody Lindenberg and Darius Taylor? Will you be expecting them in practice tomorrow? Not will they play this weekend. Not will they be going all week. He said, Do, is it intended for them to be in practice tomorrow? And Coach kind of smiled, shook his head a little bit and said, I mean, that's always the plan. We want these guys to always be. The intention is for them to be at practice, but the trainers make those decisions, and so we won't have an update for you until two hours prior to game time. So we don't know anything about who is going to be ready from the Gophers team that has seen its fair share of banged up injuries. But hopefully Darius Taylor is back. I know he was limited in practice, according to Pete Thamel, and that was prior to the Michigan week. So now you've gotten through Michigan week, you've gotten through the bye week, and now you're going to Iowa week. And I really think it's a possibility that Darius Taylor will be back on the field this week. Now, on that front, huge impacts not only to the Gophers when it comes to injuries. We still need to know about Jack Henderson. We still need to know about uh, Justin Wally, who we saw both leave the last game. Are these players going to be back? But Iowa also has injuries of their own. Not only did they lose their starting quarterback, Cade McNamara, for the entire season with an ACL injury, but then they lost Luke. Well, for, I think they lost Luke Lachey first before Cade McNamara, who was their tight end, who was getting all of that cleanup work from Laporta last year and then came in as the starter this year. And then Eric All, when Luke Lachey went down, Eric All took it up, took the mantle, said, I'm the tight end with you. I got this. 
and he gets carted off in the Wisconsin game last week. Now, this Iowa offense, it's never been one that puts up crazy numbers, but when you're missing your starting quarterback and your top two pass targets, it's rough sledding, tough sledding. Now, they still were able to pull out a victory against Wisconsin, but that means you just never can count this team out. So we're going to break down Iowa here in a little bit, but I do want to talk a little bit more about what we heard in today's presser because injuries do not shake this Iowa program. Plain and simple. We saw that firsthand. They beat Wisconsin, who most people had favored even prior to the Eric All injury. Now, Wisconsin lost a quarterback of their own, but yeah, I'll be it. Iowa gets it done. Injuries don't shake them. It's next man up, and they just showed that by beating Wisconsin both before and after the Tanner Mordecai injury. Now, Cooper DeGene is a machine. That dude is all over the field. He does it all. Special teams, defense, heck, if you put him on offense, I'm sure he would find a way to stand out as well. He is going to be a key player that the Gophers have to hone in on and know where he is at at any given moment on the field because that man can turn interceptions to touchdowns. That man can turn punt returns, kick returns to touchdowns. You have to find a way to slow down Cooper DeGene. And then finally, I asked Coach Fleck, he was he was talking about the, the different gap schemes and the different ways and intricacies of this Iowa offense and how they really just, they stay to their focus. They keep doing their fundamentals and eventually they're making the defense that's taking them on never give up an error, never make a mistake because if you do, they will capitalize on that. So I asked Coach Fleck about the little details and he mentioned how critical it is. He talked about all it takes is one time to miss an assignment or get your eyes caught elsewhere or not following the rules that they have in place for the program and the concepts. And in that one moment, Iowa's program always capitalizes. So to me, Look, the youthful mistakes that we've seen from the young players on this defense, missed tackles, miscommunications, getting caught in subs, those things cannot happen in this matchup or you will lose to Iowa once again. And after a Northwestern loss and after a Michigan butt whooping, You can't lose to Iowa in this one. If you do, it needs to be like a one-point lot. Like, you have to get out there. You have to get right. You have to get the win. You have to make some noise and get fans back on board. Now, coming up next, we're going to dive into all the nitty-gritty details of this Iowa team. Who is playing quarterback for them? What do their pass catchers look like? And so much more. That is what is coming up next here at Locked On Golden Gophers. First, I need to talk to you about our friends over at Game Time because Game Time is the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. You can go out and find them at GameTime.co or you can download the app today and take advantage by using promo code Locked on College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Now, Game Time is great because they have killer deals on last minute tickets. I was just looking at the app the other day and was seeing some two dollar, four dollar deals, and I was like, whoa. I could go broke spending money on this app. So definitely, you know, use it wisely. Mark the games that you want on your calendar, but you can know that they have killer deals on last minute tickets in their best price guarantee. So you can stop stressing over how you're going to get tickets and you can start getting hyped for the fun that you will have at these events. It's not just sports. You can get concerts and all that too. Now, also, you can get images of your seats before you buy the tickets, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive, and it's tickets in a matter of seconds, just two taps, a few taps, and you are all set, and tickets are sent directly to your phone instead of your email, so no more scrolling. You don't got to do none of that anymore. Right to your phone, pull it up, don't have to worry about wacky Wi-Fi or anything like that. Now, go to... You can go download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, download an account or download the Game Time app, create an account. Promo code Locked On College. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guarantee. And while we're at it, we have to talk about the way to keep going with daily 
fantasy because prize picks has you covered so if you like daily fantasy daily fantasy football basketball you name it daily fantasy sports it's made easy with prize picks and they've got just the thing for you so you can test your skills on prize picks the, this football season in the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports if you have skills you can turn ten dollars into $250 with just a few taps. Simply press the over or under on player stats. That's it. That's all you got to do. And if you get them right, you're making easy money, tripling your, tripling your, your, uh, what you're wagering or $10 into $250, you can win up to 25 times your money. Now, I'm all about it. Like I said last week, Jalen Hurts had a one-half rushing touchdown line, and I said I would absolutely smash it, and I did. And I did, and I got that line easily because the tush push is the truth. So you can go to prizepicks.com slash college and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for a first deposit match of up to $100. You put $100 in, they're matching you, putting another $100 in your account. That's $200 in there right away. Easy as pie. So go to prizepicks.com slash college again. Prize Picks daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, Gophers fans, we are diving in and we are breaking down the Iowa Hawkeyes, the number 24 team in the country. And this team is a team that the pollsters don't want to give credit to. They don't like Iowa, plain and simple. They don't like how it's boring games. They don't like how it's nitty gritty. They don't like how it's a lot of running. They don't really pass the ball. The scoring is low. It's all defense. Special teams is important. Pollsters don't like that. The media pollsters do not like that one bit, and that's why you typically don't find Iowa in the even top 20 very often because anytime Iowa takes a loss, those pollsters are like, oh, put them towards the back or, oh, get them out of there. They're not good enough. But then they go and they beat a Wisconsin that's expected to do well. They go and beat teams that people think they would struggle against. They've only had one hiccup this year, and that is Penn State, who many teams have hiccups with. So I'm going to give them credit where credit is due. They get it done, especially on the defense and special teams ends. And they have a balanced football program. Now, outside of that Penn State loss, who is a top five team, in my opinion, and they're going to prove it this weekend versus Ohio State, but sticking to the point. This Iowa defense hasn't given up more than 16 points in any other game this season aside from Penn State. Now, key players on this Iowa team, we'll go down the list. Deacon Hill is the quarterback now. They lost starting quarterback Cade McNamara, but for all intents and purposes, Cade McNamara wasn't lighting the world on fire. In fact, he wasn't really playing as touted as he was coming into the season, coming from Michigan prior to that season-ending injury. 51% completion percentage, four touchdowns, three interceptions, 505 yards. Now, all of that said, he is a solid quarterback. He has a good field IQ, and he has a solid understanding when he is out there. He is a good game-managing quarterback, and I got respect for those types. But he's gone for the season, and Deacon Hill has been asked to step up. Now, Deacon Hill might not have the experience. He might not have the field IQ or the upside that Cade gave this Iowa team, but he does have a strong arm. Now, that said, he doesn't really put the ball in the right places quite often. In fact, he doesn't complete many passes so far in the opportunities given. Now, in his three games of major playing time, so the last three games, he's passed for 36.5% completion rate. Now, that is downright bad. I'm not going to try to make any excuses for it. That is poor. 262 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. 36.5 36.5 completion percentage in the last three games. Now, Minnesota's pass defense has been the weakness of the defense over the weeks three through six, plain and simple. They've been given up, uh, they've been giving up yards like people are trying to buy lottery tickets. They just keep giving it away, giving it away, giving it away, and then hoping it's gonna be fixed. But it hasn't been happening so far. So we will see if Iowa tries to take advantage of that and get Deacon Hill going. But that might be too much of a liability for him, to be honest. That could put Iowa in dangerous territories to turn the ball over, and that is not what Iowa does. So I would expect them to keep the ball on the ground for most situations. 
and rely on defense and special teams like we have seen them do and do well time and time again. Now, minutes are when we're flipping it to their running back. So we said keeping it on the ground, they do have two very capable runners in LaShawn Williams and Caleb Johnson. Now, if y'all listen to the show prior to the season kicking off, we broke down every opponent and I told you I am a big Caleb Johnson fan, regardless of him playing at Iowa. I think he's a dude. I love his style of rushing and he just gets after it. Now, he had been hampered by injuries to start the season. Uh, had been a little banged up, but he came back against Purdue, went off, had like 134 yards and a touchdown, I believe. And then he did all right last week, but LaShawn Williams said, look, I'm still here too. And he broke off like a 70-plus yard touchdown and found the opening that helped give them the win in Wisconsin. Two running backs. Two guys who can get it done. Two guys to see a lot of touches in this upcoming matchup versus Minnesota. Now you flip to the wide receivers, and this is where it gets tough. The wide receivers, I don't know what to tell you with this group. I don't know if Iowa knows what to tell you. Brian Ferentz, the offensive coordinator, might not know what to tell you with these receivers. Now they did have Caleb Brown transfer in from Ohio State. Big name coming in in the offseason. But he's been away from the team at times. He's now practicing again. I don't know what to expect from him. I heard him hyped up all offseason, and he has yet to register a catch. Then you've got Nico Regani. He leads the wide receivers with 10 receptions, all right, for 83 yards. He is the most production from any wide receiver on this team, 10 receptions, 83 yards. That should tell you this wide receivers room has been slim pickings at best. But then you move to the tight ends, and that is where the passing game was plain and simple. Lachey, he was ruled out for the year. Eric All carted off against Wisconsin. But those two players, those two tight ends combined for 430 of Iowa's 816 receiving yards so far in the season. That's over 50% of their receiving yards came from those two tight ends. And three of their six receiving touchdowns, those two tight ends. So over 50% of all of their receiving production for the entire team came from those two tight ends who are both injured and not playing in this upcoming week. Both of those guys are going to be out. You've got Stilano, or Stilianos and Pascuzzi. I haven't seen anything from them prior to the injuries. I'm not sure if I would can rely on them long term, but those are guys who have to step up and names to keep an eye on when it comes to the injured tight end position. Then last thing on the offense is the offensive line. Now, the offensive line is graded out pretty well in pass blocking and pretty mediocre in run blocking. And so it was kind of surprising to me to see how well they have graded in pass blocking, even though they haven't, they've attempted to throw the ball more than Minnesota has on this season. So that tells you that you can't just say, oh, it's because they don't throw the ball that much. Neither does Minnesota, but their pass blocking grades are pretty darn good. So you look at the run blocking grades, pretty pedestrian overall. So it leaves the overall offensive line PFF grades to middling or low on the year. Their left tackle, Mason Rickman, he has a 51.9 grade that's below average. Rusty Feth, the transfer from Miami of Ohio, left guard, 56.0 PFF grade, below average. Center, Logan Jones, 65.1 PFF grade, that's about average. Right tackle, Jennings Dunker, 64.4 grade, again, about average. And then right guard, Connor Colby, 70.9 grade. It's above average, but it's not rock the world, shock the world, great. So this offensive line has had its fair share of issues. So hopefully the Gophers defensive line can get the pressure going again and start to improve on that team sacks total that started off hot, but then slowly began to slow down. They're right now 96th in the nation with 11 sacks on the season. But we flipped to Iowa's defense, and that is what is the staple for this Iowa team. But statistically, it's not actually been that great or as high caliber as what we have come to know as the Iowa defense. In fact, they're 31st in pass defense so far, 47th in rush defense so far, 27th in total defense, so top 30 total defense. 10th in scoring defense, so they do not allow teams to score, plain and simple. And we've seen that, talked about that to open the show. 32nd in turnovers gained. They only have one turnover more than what Minnesota has, but they're 117th in the nation when it comes to sacks average per game. That's the lowest I've seen this Iowa team in some time. 
Now, the secondary has been the bread and butter for this Iowa defense. You're talking about Sebastian Castro, cornerback with a 90.4 PFF grade, Xavier Nwankpa, uh, Cooper DeGene, Deshaun Lee, Quinn Schulte. These guys get it done. Their secondary has the consistency, and that's what helps them be a better pass defense than what they've shown on the ground. So what I would expect from the Gophers is if Darius Taylor is healthy, I think we're going to see a healthy dose of Darius Taylor and Zach Evans and Bryce Williams. I think the Gophers are going to try to run the ball a lot this week, just like we saw them run it, run it, run it again with Mo Ibrahim, who cracked over 200 yards on Iowa last year. But the Gophers have to clean up the mistakes in this one. The mistakes have been the make or break against Iowa for the last few years. The games have felt like Gopher wins, but Iowa doesn't let you make mistakes. So the Gophers have to clean that up. Now we talked about the secondary linebackers and defensive line aren't quite the same as what we've seen from Iowa, but that's to be expected when you lose Lucas Van Ness to the NFL, Jack Campbell to the NFL, Seth Benson to the NFL, and then Noah Shannon gets suspended in that gambling hoopla of the off season. So that is a ton of the box players being gone from this Iowa defense that was a top 10, top five unit last season. Now that said, they do have Joe Evans back and they have players who have started to step up. Aaron Graves, Jay Higgins, Yaya Black. Those guys can continue to progress and get them back to what we've seen Iowa defense over even maybe the back half of this year. Nothing to be slept on. I was going to do what it does best, consistency and capitalizing on mistakes. So this game is going to be all about clean play and little details, just like it has been for the past few years. And whoever can capitalize on mistakes and slip ups late in this game will walk away with a victory. Now to close off this show, we're going to talk about the biggest questions coming out of bye week. That's what we're going to do to wrap it up today here at Locked On Golden Gophers. First, I want to talk to you about our friends over at Athletic Brewing Company because they are changing the game when it comes to non-alcoholic beers. Now, Athletic Brewing is the real deal. I had a listener comment on the show and say, my friend thought I broke their sobriety by trying one of the non-athletic brews that you gave me. That's how good they were. That's how good they tasted. And they have so many things for you to try. They have brews of 50 styles of craft, non-alcoholic beer, including IPAs, golden, sours, and so much more. Great tasting, like I said, and award-winning. They beat out full-strength beers in global competitions. Athletic Brews is the real deal. And the best part of it all, there are no hangovers involved. When you're drinking athletic brews, non-alcoholic beers, you can find athletic brewing company, non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First time customers can use code locked on to get 15% off your first online order. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Athletic Brewing Company and athleticbrewing.com and near beer exclusions and conditions apply athletic brewing company fit for all times all right gophers fans we're wrapping it up with the biggest questions to come out of the bye week and number one for sure on that list is the health of this golden gophers team now you've got darius taylor he looks like he he he's gonna be back this season it's just a matter of when and hopefully it's this week against iowa i think that with the limited practice reps with the bye week hopefully we're seeing the young stud back on the field and we're getting back to the top of those rushing leaderboards in the big 10 but then on top of that we got to know about What's going on with Chris Ottman Bell? I think fans just want to know. It's not even like we need to see him on the field. We need him to succeed. We need, like, we just want to know he's good. We want to know he's all right. We want to know that he is doing okay because we saw him get to the field. We saw snaps starting to tick up, and then we saw out decisions for the last couple games. So we're hoping that he is good, healthy, and okay, regardless of football, aside from football. But on top of that, you know Brockington's out for the year. You know Darnell Jeffries is out for the year. We have yet to see Cody Lindenberg, the stud linebacker that many had high hopes for heading into the season. Is he going to be back in it and ready to go for this Iowa matchup? Or is it going to be continued questionables but not warming up with the team? Those questions. I just... 
I get not wanting to tip your hat to an opponent like, oh, this player is playing now or, oh, we got to prep for him. They're going to prep for him anyway, plain and simple. They are. I was still going to prep for Darius Taylor. Michigan probably still prepped for Darius Taylor. They probably still prepped for Cody Lindenberg. Plain and simple, I get holding the injuries in, but at the same time, I think a little bit of information here and there helps you calm your fan base and also give hope towards future weeks. So hopefully we will know more soon. But the next question we have heading out of the bye week is how will the passing game change or elevate in the next few weeks? Now, if we're looking at this, I will match up. I think we're going to run the ball a lot. I think they're going to run it, run it, and run it again. They're going to run it like they ran it against Iowa last year. I think that's going to be the goal, plain and simple. But Coach Fleck has talked about Ethan had his best practice that he's seen from him all year yesterday. We've talked about the growth and how, what he's seen from Ethan as he responds. And yes, the interceptions in the Michigan game were bad, but they weren't plays in which he was making the wrong read. They were just plays in which the ball was placed off by a foot or two, or Michigan was fully prepared and made a great play. They baited him into, they baited the whole team, not Ethan himself. Michigan in the first pick six knew exactly what the Gophers wanted to do. And we talked about this in the play calling about a week and a half ago as we were getting over that Michigan loss. But Michigan knew what this Gophers play calling wanted to do. They called a great play call for it. They had a great counter to it. They baited them into it. They took it off, took it home, picked it off for a pick six to open up the game. You're not going to always play the type of defenses that can pull that off, but that just tells you we need difference, differences, different outcomes, different options, different routes, different plays within this Gophers offense. So we want to see how the passing game will change over the next few weeks and can it elevate. Then you've got right hand in hand with that. Will the play calling remain bland? Like I just said, Michigan was ready for it. If you don't think I was going to be ready for it, then I'm sorry, but you're going to have a rough go this weekend. If you think that you can run the same things, the same type of play calling and think Iowa won't capitalize because they've capitalized for the past few years now. Now, PJ gave a lot of credit to Iowa and their playing style, regardless of people liking it because it brings wins, their special teams, their nitty gritty defense, and just head down mentality with their ground and pound. He gave much credit to the Iowa program, and I don't blame him for that, but I'm hoping it isn't necessarily a preview for the rest of this Minnesota offense this season because, quite frankly, they can't afford it because we don't have a special teams like Iowa's. We don't have a special teams that can flip the field. In fact, special teams has never been a strength of this team with Coach Fleck at the helm. Now, does that mean maybe we need some special teams coaches changes? I mean, some are suggesting it, but I'm not going to put that as my opinion right now. But I do think that we just aren't the same. So you can't play that same type of style. On top of that, some of your best players on the team are pass catchers right now. You got to find the way to get the ball into their hands. And finally, the defense has struggled. And the youth on the defense hasn't been able to clean up the errors yet. So you can't afford to play that style of Iowa football you've seen that you admire or that you gave credit to because this team isn't built for that right now. Plain and simple. Now, the key word is yet that the, for the young defensive players that haven't been able to clean up the errors yet. The key word is yet. And that is the final question that I have is can the defense refresh and revitalize in this final stretch of key games coming up because you've got Iowa, you've got Michigan state, you've got Illinois, you've got Purdue. Every single one of those games is possible to get a W. It is plain and simple. Whether people want to be like, Oh no, we won't win another game. Blah, blah, blah. No, all of those games are possible. Iowa lost huge players on the offense of side of ball. Now they're still finding ways to win, but that doesn't mean that there won't be opportunities to capitalize on mistakes, opportunities to get points up on them and keep it so they have to play catch up. There will be opportunities. Michigan State, four-game losing streak, including blowing a lead to Rutgers this last week. Now they're headed to Michigan to play Michigan in a huge rivalry game where Michigan's probably going to dice them up. And then they've had coaching changes. They're all over the place. Michigan State is definitely a game that this team has the possibility to win. 
Illinois, lost to Purdue, lost to Nebraska, also messed around and almost lost to Toledo and Florida Atlantic. They recently beat Maryland, so they got back on track, but that just tells you anything can happen in this Big Ten, including beating Illinois at home. Then you've got Purdue on the road. They hung around with Iowa, but they were destroyed by Ohio State, destroyed by Wisconsin. Syracuse kind of picked them apart. Purdue is a game this team can win. So if you want to go bowling, you need to win three of those next four matchups that we just went through. Now, that's not saying that Wisconsin, or Minnesota can't beat Wisconsin at the end of the year. And so if they only win two here and they're at five wins, they can not They can still win that Wisconsin game, but you don't want to put that type of pressure. And the postseason play expectations relying on the last game of the season plain and simple it's too much pressure it's a young team you don't want to do all that wisconsin's going to be hungry after back-to-back axe losses so don't put your entire postseason play possibilities on the last game of the season go out take care of business re refresh as coach flex talked about it's not a reset after a bye week it is a refresh or uh, a rejuvenation of sorts go out there and do that then you need to win three of these next four Three of the next four, and you can put yourself in the conversation of a bowl game, and you're in the bowl, plain and simple. Then you can go and focus on keeping the ax here. Now, that is a lot to talk about. We're going to keep you posted here at Locked on Golden Gophers. I hope you enjoyed the show. Go take care of business now and allow your team to build confidence. We're going to dive into Iowa Week all week this week. Stay tuned in. Hit subscribe. I'll see you then. Roll the boat. Sky, you go Gophers. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.